ABC News has learned the shooting suspect is 48-year-old George Sodini of Scott Township, Pennsylvania. According to disturbing writings Sodini apparently posted on the web, this horrific crime is something he'd been planning for some time. In a posting dated August 3rd, his last, he writes, I took off today, Monday, and tomorrow to practice my routine and make sure it's well polished. I need to work out every detail. There is only one shot. I haven't had a drink since Friday at about 2.30. Total effort needed. Tomorrow is the big day. And sadly, it looks like his twisted plot went off as planned. About 10 minutes after a Latin dance aerobic class starts in the L.A. Fitness Center, George Sodini enters in workout clothes carrying a duffel bag. Moments later, shots ring out. Behind the building here. Witnesses say the gunman had just come from a nearby restaurant. Although they claim he didn't look like he belonged in the class, police say he was a member of the gym. Suddenly, he turns off the lights, and the darkness flashes with gunfire. Police say the perpetrator carries two handguns, fires indiscriminately, hitting almost everyone in the room, some more than once. He knew exactly where he was going and uh, pulled the guns out and started shooting. One of his victims, a newlywed. A couple bullets went right past her head. She went down, and he straddled her. And Leaned down and shot her right to her shoulder. The instructor of the class is one of the victims. She is pregnant. And works can't lose it. And suicide is a work. And even if I committed adultery and murder like David did, they're under the blood. The ungodly are justified. If that happens when I'm ungodly, certainly no ungodliness can take it away. It is so much a clean slate. The moment you're justified, all your sin, past, yes, and all the sins you will ever commit are totally forgiven. They're totally erased. The fact is, a man can commit suicide and he will go straight to glory. But the truth is, he wasn't characterized as a murderer. He may have fallen. A righteous man can fall. But I mean, that's the story on the guy. Can a true Christian commit suicide? Well, of course they can. They can. Just like they can commit any other sin, and it's still under.
boast of the fact that God has children running around all over this country full of carnality, steeped in sin, doing whatever they want, and God does nothing according to your preaching. But they're saved, bless God. When you preach their funeral, you'll preach them straight into heaven. I've seen it a thousand times. Remember just a while back, a man in my own town in Illinois who was a known drug addict, drug dealer, fornicator, absolutely everything. And he is there. He passes away. And the pastor of one of the largest Baptist churches in the area, standing there, funeral. The th place is loaded with every person that's hardly ever been in church. Drug addicts and everything you can imagine are all there in church to honor their dead friend. And that pastor gets up and he says, I praise God. I know this young man. He sowed a lot of wild oats, but when he was nine years old, I was there when he prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior. And he's in heaven today. And all those lost sinners went straight out into the streets justified in their sin because of conservative evangelical Baptist preaching that's typical in almost every church in this country it's true the same way that infant baptism in my opinion was the, was the golden calf of the reformation for the Baptist and the evangelicals and everyone else who's followed them today I'll tell you that sinner's prayer has sent more people to hell than anything on the face of the earth you say, how can you say such a thing? Go with me to Scripture and show me, please. I, I would love you to stand up and tell me where anyone evangelized that way. The Scripture does not say that Jesus Christ came to the nation of Israel and said that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, who would like to ask me into their hearts? It's not what it says. He said, repent and believe the gospel. How men today are trusting in the fact that at least one time in their life they prayed a prayer and someone told them they were saved because they were sincere enough. And so in their salvation, if you ask them, are you saved? They do not say, yes, I am because I'm looking unto Jesus and there is mighty evidence giving me assurance of being born again. No, they say one time in my life I prayed a prayer and they live like Devils. They prayed. A prayer heard of one evangelist who was coaxing a man to do that thing. Find the man felt so uncomfortable, the evangelist said, Well, I'll tell you what, I'll pray to God for you, and if it's what you want to say to God, squeeze my hand. Behold the power of God. Decisionism. The idolatry of decisionism. Men think they're going to heaven because they have judged the sincerity of their own decision. When Paul came to the church in Corinth, he did not say to them, look, you're not living like Christians, so let's go back to that one moment in your life and when you prayed that prayer and let's see if you were sincere. No, he said this, test yourselves, examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Because I want you to know, my friend, salvation is by faith alone. It is a work of God. It is a grace upon grace upon grace. But the evidence of conversion is not just your examination of your sincerity at the moment of your conversion. It is ongoing fruit in your life. It is the ongoing fruit in your life. Oh, my dear friend, look what we've done. Is it a tree known by its fruit? What, 60, 70 percent of America thinks it's converted, born again? We kill how many thousands of babies a day? We're hated around the world for our immorality? Yet we're Christian? And I lay this squarely, the blame, at the feet of the preacher.